In this video, we're going to go over simple machines such as the lever and how to calculate the mechanical advantage. So let's say if we have a simple lever, and let's say this is the fulcrum. This works like a seesaw in a way. We're going to apply an input force. The distance between the axis of rotation and where you apply the force is known as the input arm or the lever arm. This is the output arm. And as you apply an inward force this way, it's going to create an outward force. This output force could be less than or greater than the input force, depending on what the input and output arms are. Now the input force multiplied by the input arm is equal to the torque. The torque that you apply on this side is equal to the torque created on this side. So the torque remains the same, therefore the input force times the input arm is equal to the output force times the output arm. So let's work on an example. Let's say that the input force is 100 newtons. And let's say that the input arm is 8 meters and the output arm is 2 meters. What output force will be created by this lever? Now it turns out that the larger force is associated with the shorter side. So because this is the shorter side, the output force is going to be larger than the input force. And because the output arm is four times as short compared to the input arm, the output force should be four times as large. Now let's use the equation to calculate the output force. So we know it's the input force times the input arm and that's equal to the output force times the output arm. So if we divide both sides by 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4 and 100 times 4 is 400. So therefore the output force is 400 newtons. So this machine, this lever, was able to multiply the force that you apply by a factor of 4. And that's the purpose of machines. Machines allows you to lift up heavy objects. Let's say if you want to lift up a, a heavy package, using a lever can make it a lot easier. So machines are very useful if they can multiply the force that you apply uh, to an object. The mechanical advantage of this particular lever is equal to 4. The mechanical advantage is the output force divided by the input force, which is 400 divided by 100, and so that's 4. If the mechanical advantage was 10, that means that the machine can multiply your force by a factor of 10. So if you were to apply an input force of 100, the machine would apply an output force of 1,000. Now, mechanical advantage can also be calculated using this equation. It's also equal to the input arm divided by the output arm for a lever. So this is 8 divided by 2, which will also give you 4. Now let's try a problem. The mechanical advantage of a lever is 6. What is the input force applied if the output force is 24 newtons? So let's draw a picture first. So we know that the output force is 24 newtons. If the mechanical advantage is greater than 1, the output force is greater than the input force. So since the mechanical advantage is 6, 
that means that the output force is six times as great compared to the input force. So using the equation, MA is equal to the output force divided by the input force. So MA is 6, the output force is 24. Let's solve for the input force. So instead of writing 6, let's write it as 6 over 1. And let's cross multiply. 1 times 24 is 24. And then on the other side, we have 6 times the input force. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. So the input force is 4 newtons. Now we know that the input arm is 12 meters. What is the output arm? We know that the shorter side is associated with the larger force. So we know that it has to be 12 divided by 6, so it's going to be 2. But if you want to use the equation, here's what you need to do. MA is equal to the input arm divided by the output arm. The mechanical advantage is 6. The input arm is 12. And we need to solve for the output arm. So let's cross multiply just like we did before. 12 times 1 is 12. And on the other side is 6 times L. So if we divide both sides by 6, we can see that the length of the output arm is 12 divided by 6, which is 2. Now, let's talk about the ramp. Now, typically, you don't think of a ramp as a machine, but it can affect the force that you apply to get an object from ground level to a height of B. Now, we can move a box directly up to position B, or we can move it along the ramp. Does it require the same amount of energy to get it from, let's say, position C to B or position D to B? Is one path easier than the other? And if so, which path is easier? It turns out that the work required to move the box from C to B is the same as lifting the box from D to B. Let's say the box has a mass of 10 kilograms. To lift it up from D to B, you have to go against gravity. You have to apply an upward force that is at least equal to the weight force. Now, work is equal to force times distance. Now, if you wish to do work against gravity, the force that you need to apply has to be equal to the weight force, which is mg. And you're going to lift it by a height of h, which is the vertical displacement. So the work done by gravity, or the work that you have to do against gravity to lift it from d, and, from d to b, is mgh. So the mass is 10 kilograms. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And let's say that the height of the ramp is 1 meter. Well, actually, let's say it's 2 meters. And let's say that the distance from C to B, let's say it's 10 meters. So this is 10, and this is 2. So to lift it from D to B, the height is 2 meters. So we need to lift it by a displacement of 2 meters. So 10 times 9.8 times 2 is about 196 joules. So that's how much work is required to lift the box from position D to B. Now, to move it along the ramp from C to B, it's going to require the same amount of work. But with that value, we can calculate the force required to move it from C to B. So W is equal to FD. The work required is still 196 joules. And the displacement from C to B, the distance that we're moving it is 10 meters. So 196 divided by 10 is equal to a force of 19.6 newtons.
Now, the force required to lift the box is equal to mg, which is a mass of 10 times 9.8. So about 98 newtons is required to lift the box. So now let's think about what this means. The work required to move it from D to B and C to B is the same. It doesn't matter which route you take, you're going to use up the same amount of energy. However, because you're moving a shorter distance from D to B, it feels harder. It's harder to lift up the box because you have to apply a greater force, but for a shorter distance. So you're applying a larger force, but for a shorter period. Now, from C to B, notice that it appears easier. The force that's required to move it along the ramp is 19.6 newtons, but you need to do so for a longer distance. So regardless if you go from D to B or C to B, the work required is the same. However, the force is not. So the advantage of using a ramp is that when you need to lift a box from C to the B, the force required to move it along the ramp is less. So the ramp makes it easier for you to get to C to B, but you have to put the work, it just, you have to move for a longer distance because the work is going to be the same. So that's the advantage of a ramp. It decreases the required force that you need to get from ground level to a height of 2 meters or to position B. The equation for the mechanical advantage of a ramp, it's equal to the the ramp length, let's call it RL, divided by the height of the ramp. The ramp is 10 meters long and the height is 2 meters, so 10 divided by 2 gives you a mechanical advantage of 5. Now let's think about what this means. Notice that the force required to lift up the box from D to B is 98. That's five times as great compared to 19.6. 98 divided by 19.6 is five. So the ramp, this particular ramp, it decreases the required force by a factor of five. Now let's try another problem. Let's see if you understand this concept. So let's say if we have another ramp and let's say the length of the ramp is 10 meters but the height is 1 meter. And let's say that the mass of the box is 20 kilograms. And G, instead of using 9.8, let's say gravitational acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. So what is the force required to lift the box from position, let's call this A, B, C. From position B to C, what's the force required? The force required is equal to the weight force. That's the minimum force you need to lift the box from B to C. And the weight force is the mass times the gravitational acceleration. So at least 200 newtons of force is required to lift the box from B to C. Now what is the mechanical advantage of the ramp? Mechanical advantage is the, the ratio between the length of the ramp and the height. So it's 10 over 1, which is 10. So therefore, if we wish to move the box from position A to C, what force is required to move it along the ramp? So because the mechanical advantage is 10, it's going to be 10 times easier to move it from A to C. So if the upward force that we need to apply is 200 newtons, then the force that we need to move it along the ramp from position A to position C is going to be 10 times less. It's going to be 200 divided by 10, which is 20 newtons. And so that's the advantage of a ramp. The ramp allows us to move an object to a higher position with a smaller force. So a smaller force is required to move it along the ramp. So whereas we need a larger force to move it from B to C. 
So remember this though. The smaller force is always associated with the longer side, whereas the larger force is associated with the shorter side. So you can apply a large force over a shorter distance, or you can apply a small force over a longer distance. In either case, the work is the same. The work is equal to force times distance. So 20 times 10 is 200 joules, or 200 times 1 is still 200 joules. The work required to lift it up is the same. So you're not expending extra energy. It's just as easier to apply a smaller force over a longer distance. Now let's say if it takes 20 seconds to move it from position A to position C, how much power is exerted? Power is the ratio between work and time. So the amount of work to move it from A to C is 200 joules of energy. And the time is 20 seconds. So 200 divided by 20 is 10. The unit for power is watts. One watt is one joule per second. So 10 watts represents 10 joules per second. That means that every second you are expending 10 joules of energy to move it from position A to position C. Now let's say to move it from B to C if you can do the job much faster. Let's say you can do it in 4 seconds. So the work is still the same. It's 200 joules. But if you can lift it from B to C in 4 seconds, then the power is 50 watts. That means that every second you're expending 50 joules of energy to lift it from B to C. So power is a rate. It's the rate of energy transfer. It's how fast you can transfer energy by doing work. Or how fast you can get the job done. To illustrate the concept of power, let's say we, if we have two individuals. And both of them are going to lift a 10 kilogram box. And they're going to lift it by a distance of 2 meters. Let's say this is person A and person B. Now person A, he's going to get the job done in 1 second. And person B, he's going to take 10 seconds to get the job done. Now which individual performs more work? And which one exerts more power? So work is force times distance. And to lift up an object, the minimum force that you acquire is equal to the weight of the object, which is mg. And d is basically the height that you lift it. So the work required to lift an object is mgh. Now both objects have a mass of 10. Let's say the gravitational acceleration is 10 instead of 9.8. And the height is 2. 10 times 10 is 100 times 2 is 200. So both individuals perform the same amount of work. They lift in the same box a height of 2 meters. So they both perform 200 joules of work. Now power has to do with how fast you can get the job done. Person A takes one second to lift the object 2 meters. So the power exerted by him is the work divided by time is 200 joules per second. So he exerts 200 watts of power. Person B takes 10 seconds to get the job done. So he's a bit slower. So therefore, even though he can still do the same amount of work, it takes him longer to get it done. So the power that he exerts is less. It's 200 joules divided by 10 seconds or 20 watts. So power is how fast you can transfer energy, or how fast you can get the job done. So person B can transfer 20 joules every second 
to lift up the box. Person A transfers 200 joules in one second to lift up the box. So that's why person A exerts more power. He can transfer more energy every second. And so that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.